Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal. How are you doing? I hope everyone is well. It is Wednesday. We're one day away from what is a very, very big game in the Europa League for Arsenal against Olympiacos again. And we've just been speaking to Mikel Arteta and Thomas Partey ahead of the first leg in Athens. Arsenal will fly out later today to Greece. Uh, good memories, obviously, good recent memories of their win against Benfica there just a couple of weeks ago and also winning in Greece against Olympiacos last season before it all went very, very horribly wrong in the second leg at the Emirates. Hopefully that's not going to happen at this time around. Mikel Arteta, as you would expect, was asked about that during the press conference and that pretty dramatic night, uh, which feels an awful long time ago now, just before... Um, Shut down. Well, that was the night, obviously, that just soon after that, Mikel Arteta contacted, contacted, um, contracted, sorry, <laughs> coronavirus. And uh, then, yeah, the whole football landscape changed. Um, and we're still not back to normal yet. But um, I thought I'd pop on and talk a little bit about what um, Arteta, but first, Thomas Party actually. Uh, had to say ahead of that game and then look a little bit towards uh, Thursday night's match and the team news, that sort of thing. So let's get going. Let's start with Thomas Party, shall we? Because it was quite interesting to get to speak to him. It's been a difficult time for him since he arrived at Arsenal. I think we've all seen glimpses of what he can bring. Um, but the injuries have certainly you know, limited his impact since making that move from Madrid that we we're all so excited about last summer. He's only started 11 times, Thomas Partey. I think it's 16 appearances in all competitions since, since that £45 million move from Atletico on the final day of the transfer window. Um, and he was speaking about that today and about how difficult it's been, the adaptation and the injuries. And he said, look, it's difficult moments to get used to how the team play. It's part of the game. You never know when you're going to get injured. I do all my work and I try to make sure... I'm uh, fit before any game. I think the injuries are part of the ad ad uh, adaptation. Now I feel good. I'm doing all the necessary work to be more fit and to play more games. I still have time. I'm doing my best to get my level of competition up and I think everything will be fine and I'll be able to show what I can do. Now, I think we all certainly hope that Thomas Party can show what he can do soon because um, we've seen glimpses of it, like I said, um, but just not enough yet. And uh, it's so clear I think when he is fit and firing how transformative he can be to this Arsenal team he was asked um in it you know have, have you felt 100% yet at all since you've moved to Arsenal and he said yes there's been a, a few games I think against United at their home uh, and against Wolves away also I was able to show what I can do due to less games and less training I think I have to now keep working keep trying to get back to that level again so only two times has Thomas Partey felt um, like he's reached his true potential so far while playing for Arsenal and I think it's no surprise really when he names those two games because he was an absolute monster in that win at Old Trafford um, way back when, whenever it was. I think it was the first, I think it might have been the 1st of October, something like that. Um, that one there when he was absolutely fantastic. That was just after he'd arrived and then he, that was a real sort of impact performance. That one was sending a message to the whole of the Premier League about just how good Thomas Partey can be. Dominated that midfield. Everyone was raving about him afterwards. I remember Roy Keane sitting in the studio at Sky Sports saying he wished he had him in the United midfield. And um, unfortunately, the injuries to that the two thigh injuries the one hamstring injuries totally um robbed us of an opportunity to really see him repeat in that type of performance over and over again he also highlights the game against Wolves when he was fantastic in that first half um at Molyneux when Arsenal were brilliant and party absolutely ran the show um, he understandably got tired in the second half after that I think he ended up going off once um the red card certainly the second red card happened um but those those are the two games that certainly stand out in my mind for when we've seen thomas party at his best and it was interesting listening to him speaking about the issues he's faced and the difficulties of settling in um and adjusting to the premier league and why he believes that's certainly played a part in the injuries that he's picked up um he also sp spoke about plenty of other stuff talked about the importance of winning the europa league to get into the champions league and how arsenal you know vital it is for arsenal to be in that competition and um, what it will do to attract in players and all that sort of thing. The, the full transcript is up now on um, uh, on Arsenal.com, but I'll also drop the piece that I've written from the press conference um, with Thomas Party in the comments section below, so you can have a read of that where he talks about his injuries and the Europa League and that sort of thing. Right, let's move on to what Mikel Arteta had to say. Um, obviously, a lot of this was about last year's games against Olympiacos and what it felt and how 
dejecting it was. I mean, I remember the, the mood at the stadium after that game with the way it happened, the last minute equal, well, winner, sorry, for Olympiacos, and then Orba going down and missing that chance with the last kick of the game and injury time at the end of extra time to send Arsenal through and just the feeling of dejection after the match that Arsenal managed to throw that away after winning the first leg in Greece. And um, Mikel was asked about, you know, is this your chance for revenge? And that is something, it's a word that's been spoken about a lot since the draw. And he said, obviously last time was it was a tough one to swallow. The way it happened at the end, it was really cruel after everything we did in the two games to lose it that way and with the late chance Orba had. But we've moved on. We have some feelings towards that team, Olympiacos, and we want to put it right in the next round. So although he stopped short really of staying out and out revenge, I think that, was that last little line of we have some feelings towards that team and we want to put it right certainly suggests that Arsenal are going into this one with a, a little bit more on it than just the match. I think they're all going to be thinking about what happened last season and how painful that was, really. Um, interesting comments, I thought, here from Arteta, talking about kind of whether he thinks Arsenal are more resilient now than they were a year ago in that when they last met Olympiacos he said I think we are a better team than we were last year looking back at the two games that we played against them and the way we are playing now I think we have come a long way they have some different players as well but a very similar structure to last year they've been doing really well they played in the Champions League knocked out got knocked out of the Champions League they played well against City in the two games as well they will be a really tough opponent so Interesting there saying that Arsenal have come a long way since that game. When you look at the league table, it doesn't really suggest that. I think Arsenal, are, well, they're 10th now. They finished 9th last season. And yeah, Mikel saying they come a long way. And I know that is what a lot of people will pick up on and get a little bit angry on him. But I have to say, and I've said it in previous videos, I do agree with him. I know the league table doesn't lie and that doesn't look good. But I still think, and I'm, I'm kind of basing this on what I've seen since Christmas and that's what I'm, I'm holding on to and that's why I'm feeling kind of positive about Arsenal despite how pretty disastrous this season has been let's face it I'm not trying to paint a picture of this has been a good season it hasn't but I do think since Christmas we've seen a marked improvement in Arsenal in all areas of how they're playing chances creation shots on goal during games chances conceded everything I think the numbers are showing that Arsenal are heading heading in the right direction um and so I can see what he means there when he says he's come a lot, they've come a long way. I think Arsenal certainly now are a much better side than they were at the end of last season and when they were playing Olympiacos last season. So I do agree with him, even though that the league table suggests that Arsenal aren't any further on than they were last season. In fact, it shows that they're actually lower down than they were last season. But I do agree with Mikel, and, um, although uh, I'm sure a lot of you probably won't. Just lastly on the Olympiacos game last season, he said, emotionally it really drained us because it was a roller coaster during the game of what happened. It could have ended in a beautiful way, but it ended in a really harsh way for us. I think emotionally it took some time to get the team and individuals lifted because it really, really hurt. Fingers crossed we're not going to have a similar outcome this time around but it's certainly going to be two very very uh, dramatic games I imagine again two very tense games I imagine again and Arsenal would love to get a decent result away in Greece lot um, tomorrow night I mean they did last season in fact didn't concede a goal obviously went got the away goal and still ended up going out but um, you'd hope that they've learned the lessons from then and if they can get themselves a decent result in Greece to bring back to North London then they'll be in a very very good position to go through and get into the quarterfinals which obviously then you're getting very you can really start dreaming of the final when you get that close so massive massive two games for Arsenal this especially considering the league position um, just huge and it's the start of a massive week because we've got Olympiacos Thursday night Tottenham on Sunday, Olympiacos again, um, and then it's West Ham, I think, the following week. So a really, really big 9-10 game period for Arsenal when they're going to play four crucial matches, um, two of them North London derbies, and um, I think we're really at the, the point of the Ar Arsenal season now. It could either go horribly, horribly wrong in the next 10 days, or the league, league season could be looking an awful lot better at the end of these t 10 days. So a massive, a massive period of Arsenal season coming up now. So looking at that, Mikel's saying, look, we have a massive week with the next four games that we have in a short period. We have to manage the squad, but obviously the main game is tomorrow night and we have to focus on that. Tomorrow's game is going to help us for the weekend. It's going to help us for next week. We have to focus on that. Um, and that was it in response to like, are you going to shuffle your squad? You know, are you going to be thinking about the Tottenham game when naming your team against Olympiacos on Thursday night? Now, I don't think Arsenal can do that. The, the way the fixtures have sort of, 
fallen in this period is a bit harsh on Arsenal. It's a bit unlucky, especially Tottenham having to stay at home for the first leg. So they've got no travel before Sunday's North London derby. Arsenal, meanwhile, having to go all the way to Greece and back again. You know, they're going to be, there's no doubt that Tottenham are in a better position um, going into Sunday's North London derby. But I don't think Arsenal can afford to focus on that, even though it's a huge game, even though it's Tottenham. Tomorrow night has to be the priority for Arsenal. The Europa League is their best opportunity of getting back into Europe this season, uh, next season. It's certainly going to be um, uh, their best opportunity of getting into Champions League, obviously, because Europa League is still not absolutely out of it in terms of Premier League uh, finishing position, but even that's looking unlikely now. But Champions League, you think that's gone definitely for for in terms of finishing the top four. So if Arsenal want to get back there and they do, then they're going to have to win the Europa League. Um, so... Thursday night's game has to take preference even over the North London derby. So you can't afford to be resting players, I don't think, on Thursday night in ter- with Sunday's game uh, in mind. Um, even though, like I said, it is about Tottenham. In terms of Emil Smith-Rowe for that one, looking pretty good for Smith-Rowe. Hopefully he's going to have a full training session today. Obviously missed out against Burnley at the weekend with that hip injury, but he's going to have a full training session today and then Arsenal are going to make a decision on whether he's going to fly to Greece. You would think that if he comes through that training session unscathed, then he'll certainly be on the plane. Any sort of risk involved, you know, if that training session, if he feels anything in that, you'd imagine Arsenal will just leave him at home and let him get ready for the Tottenham game on Sunday because he may be young, uh, he may not play too much football this season, but Smith Rowe is clearly a very, very important player. Mikel Arteta's new look sort of plans for Arsenal that we've seen since Christmas. So good news on Smith Rowe. In terms of the other team news, Arsenal looking pretty solid. I would say um, they're in a decent position at the moment considering, I've said it time and time again, I know Arsenal's medical team get a bit of grief at times, but when you consider the demands of this season, how many games have been played in such a short space of time, no pre-season, to fact, to the fact to be where they are now in what what are we, March, and basically everyone is fit. Rudison's back fit again. Suarez, I know he didn't play against Burnley, but he was only rested at the weekend. He did travel up to Turf Moor, so he'll be involved, uh, come back into the squad this time around. And like I said, Smith Rowe's got a late fitness test. But other than that, unless it's something we don't know about or something that happens in training today, then Arsenal are in pretty excellent condition going into what is a crucial period of the season for them. So that is good news for Arsenal. Certainly good news for Mikel Arteta. Now, if you haven't seen it, um, I did an interview with Bruma this week. Um, Portugal International plays for Olympiacos, will be involved obviously tomorrow night and in both legs for the Greek champions. He's on loan there from PSV for the season. I spoke to him about this game, about Emil Smith Rowe, who is teammates at um, Leipzig. Uh, I think that piece hasn't gone live on goal yet, but it will be coming later on today. So please do check out my social media. Go to follow me on Twitter at Charles underscore Watts. I'll tweet that link out once it's live. But the main part of the interview went up yesterday. Uh, he talks about a lot of stuff, talks about uh, coming up against Cedric Suarez. Obviously, they were teammates at Sport in Lisbon and they are teammates with the Portuguese national team. Talks about Socrates as well. Um, Socrates only six weeks ago left uh, Arsenal for Olympiacos and now as is away in football he ends up getting drawn against them and will be returning to the Emirates and coming up against his former teammates tomorrow night in Greece as well he talks about that talks about um, him revealing some secrets ahead of the game I'll just go, go through a couple of the quotes it's what Bruma had to say to me on Socrates he said he has told us some secrets but I won't tell you any of them uh, it's between us and Socrates of course he knows Arsenal's locker room better than anyone he is a player with a lot of experience he's played for Milan Dortmund and Arsenal who are all great clubs so Socrates is a very good voice he's been helping us a lot in the locker room and he's helping the team with experience we're really pleased to have him and I'm sure he's going to be a big help on Thursday it's interesting I thought, um, and again, I will drop the interview link into the comment section below if you want to read that. I thought it was quite good stuff from Bruma ahead of that one. Um, good talker as well, Bruma. It'll be interesting to see how he gets on uh, tomorrow night. And finally, before I go, I just wanted to talk. I'm not sure if you've seen it yet, but if you haven't, then head over to The Athletic. It was a good interview with Sven Mislintat, obviously Arsenal's former head of recruitment left a couple of years ago now in charge and he's technical director at Stuttgart um, he's spoken to the athletic to uh, Raf Hongenstein and some good stuff in there that's well worth a read he talks about Gwen, his surprise at Gwenduzi and Torreira being loaned out um, here's some quotes says I respect Mikel a lot 
Uh, I'd love to talk to him one day to understand his reasons for sending Matteo as well as Lucas out on loan and tell him my view in relation to their qualities, but it's his decision, of course. My personal opinion remains that Matteo would still add some extra qualities to Arsenal's midfield like Lucas could. Their market values increased hugely after their debut season. Talking a little bit more on... um, Gwenduzi says Matteo has a personality needed to demand every ball in tight situations and he has great vision to play vertical and every other angle. That's his real strength. As a teenager from League Two, he played 48 games for Arsenal in the first season. I assure you, you are not able to survive that amount of Premier League caps playing adolescent football. He's a young central midfielder in that position. Players reach their peak at 27, 28. He obviously doesn't get everything right, but he plays with a decisiveness and quality that makes him an extraordinary player. So interesting comments there from Sven Mislintat. The interview talks a lot more than just about Gwen Doozy and Terreri talks about why he left Arsenal, why he joined Arsenal uh, and things like that. So I do advise if you are a subscriber to The Athletic, I do advise you go over, give that interview a click if you haven't yet because it's well worth a couple of minutes of your time. Right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. As always, I will hopefully pop back on tomorrow in the morning at some point and do um, have a closer look ahead of Thursday night's game, do my predicted 11, look at the key battles and the key areas and the key team selection issues Mikel Arteta faces ahead of that game. So do watch out for that one. But until then, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Um, And like I said, have a quick read of a couple of links I've put in the comments below. Um, The first one that Bruma on... um, at the head of Arsenal's game on Thursday night and also Thomas Partey talking about his struggles so far adapting to life in England. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your day and I'll speak to you very, very soon.